lasers, CAD design, welding, acid baths, putting small things together to make bigger things. Today, we're gonna go over the process on how we make the jack rod and stick around to the end of the video for a chance to win one of these. But first, let me paint a picture for you. You're getting all ready to take a nice girl down to your local Chili's, but oh no, your exhaust is dragging on the ground for reasons unknown. You don't wanna sound like a scrub, but you gotta go. Now you gotta jack that thing up because your car's so damn low, throw a jack rod under there because nobody's got time for jack stands, and boom, fixed. You're on your way to the best bang for your buck sit down restaurant you'll ever go to. It all begins as an idea, of course, but that idea gets put down on paper. And when I say paper, I mean Blake, our engineer, designs it in CAD. This is Blake, he doesn't like to be on camera though. Hey Blake, can you show me the jack rod? Oh, look at that. Can you show the, where it's the stop block? It's the other one. So you started with this, and then, this is the first prototype. See, all the, we had to change the side, the shape of the holes. Uh, this one had, it just has all thread on the inside. Uh, this was just, this one was just kind of like thrown together. Yeah. And then it kind of evolved from here. It still had the, the billet handle though. That's cool. Yeah. So from here, it, it does look a little smaller too compared to the... Yeah, we, we, we have a gap here now to allow room for the weld. The pad is wider. This shrunk. That's awesome. That's where it all started. Thanks, Blake. Yep. Once we were through a few revisions and the engineering side was done, the product begins life as raw metal. And that metal needs to be cut. This happens on a bandsaw for the inner and outer shaft pieces. The saw cuts four sticks of metal at a time and automatically moves the metal to the length it needs to be cut. But my favorite cutting process is with lasers. There's lasers, dude. I know it's not beams of red light like in the movies, but it's extremely efficient and fast to cut this amount of metal into very specific shapes. Once everything's cut, it's time to weld. Welding is such a cool process to me, so let's just watch some clips of James and Matt burning some metal. Side note, we went drifting a few weeks ago and those guys have cars on jacks all the time. A perfect application for the jack rod. It's way safer to get under the vehicle with a jack rod and it's much faster than jack stands. Just ask Dylan. This allowed me to comfortably and safely change my tires. I'm gonna inspect my front end too. Probably gonna use it again. It's like having a jack stand without bringing jack stands. I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna look at you, I'm gonna look at this again, back at you, back at the camera. And um, I'm gonna do it with my hands, man. Wow, well said. This handle is machined from a small block of aluminum, but I'm gonna let Cooper tell you how we do that. Where do we start this process? All right, so we start this process over on the top, on the bandsaw. Yeah. Cut these into four and a half pieces of this raw stock. And then each one will have its own section. You cut all these? I do. All from front of them. You got a long way to go, Cooper. I do. It's about six, six days of work or so. Wow. All right, so that's how it starts. Look at that. Gorgeous. Load them all in here. Yep. How many are you doing at a time? So three, three per time. So you have the first process that takes off most of the metal, and then you'll have the second process where we flip it over and it cuts the bottom half where the jaws were holding on to, and then you move it to the third level where it just finishes up the last bits. All right. Now the inner and outer shaft go on the most sciency part of their journey. So buckle up. We got some big words coming. This process involves dipping the parts in various tanks, 
The first tank is the Electro Cleanser. A heated alkaline bath with an electrical current cleans up shop debris and oils. The parts are then rinsed and moved to a hydrochloric muriatic acid pickle. I know. This stage removes oxidation and rust. It also helps clean up the welds, which in addition are wire brushed, just to be sure. One thing I thought was really cool is this tank also imparts a positive charge on the part so that when it goes to the zinc tank, it plates much quicker. The third tank is where they're actually applying the zinc metal to the part. This tank is an alkaline non-cyanide zinc bath. It is being electroplated at this stage. This brings us to our final tank, clear chromate conversion coating. It's kind of like a dye, but it's not really a dye. The simplest explanation is it provides a little extra protection, better appearance, and protects the part from staining and fingerprints. It leaves the part with that silver blue hue you see when finished. Thanks for sticking with me through that part. I found it fascinating. Kind of like drifting. All the parts are back to AGM, where they're being assembled right here in San Diego, California. For a more in-depth video on how the jackrod works, check out this card in the upper right corner, or visit the link in the description. And that is the journey of the jackrod. Thank you so much for sticking with us through this video, or if you heard about the giveaway at the beginning of the video and you just skipped to the end, doesn't matter. The person who leaves the most creative comment about the jackrod will win one of these jackrods for free. We will announce the winner next Tuesday, right at the end of our Justin Lofton Storytime video. So stay tuned for that. Get to making some comments and it's gotta be creative, make it fun. Come on, this is a fun thing for everyone. And you can win this. Now jackrod that like button and take an alkaline non-cyanide zinc bath in that subscribe button. Work smart, play hard. Yeah.